Here we go. What's up, everybody? Steve Fields, aka Thug Geek, here for our Blur Soup episode four. With, of course, the super popular, ever knowing Fonzarelli. Hello, Fonzarelli. Hello. It's me, your useless bathtub of information. <laughs> no, not, <laughs> not totally useless. Come on out, y'all. So, we're about to jump right in with the topics and go ahead and get us started, Fonz. I do. I do. So, I can't stop thinking about it. I dream about it sometimes, but even though it's only been a couple of days, but I've been thinking about Nickelodeon's All Star Brawl fighting game. Yes. It's coming literally this fall, which is only two months away, technically. It's got a rollback net code. I have no idea what that means. But everybody's I'll go, been talking I'll go, about I'll go, it. I can go in detail on that. <laughs> so yes. for, for, for us fighting game players, a rollback net code is better access for actually tournament gameplay and for okay. online gameplay. So what that, that lets us do is actually not worry about any game lag. And, and a, lot of, a lot of certain games don't have good net play code. Like, it's funny because like the top American games... That people that nobody play have good net code. Like Killer Instinct, Skullgirls have fantastic net code. But then you have games like Tekken 7, which are slowly fixing, and Street Fighter 5, which are slowly fixing too, that have shitty net code. And even with Smash, like Smash itself, that's why a lot of players, when they announced the OLED Switch, they have the actual plug and play for the Ethernet port because the Wi Fi net code is trash. So that's why we're like, yo, it's just super excited for that. So for this game to have robot net code, which means they want motherfuckers to play this shit. And so. I'm super excited. Like, come on now. Plus, it's got Powder Toast Man, one of my favorite characters of all time. Like, this is literally the, this game is nostalgia because it has every generation of Nick, Nicktoon fans in it. Like, I'm like I grew, I'm born in the 80s, grew up in the 90s, so Ren and Stimpy, All Real Monsters, like, all that. That's my stuff. Doug, like, that's me. So, I mean, we haven't seen Doug yet, which I'm kind of worried, worried. I mean, I hope we do see Doug, but what about you? Who are you, who are you excited for? Um, well, I do agree with you about the generational set because one of the, one of the characters I'm really excited, excited for is, um, Lucy Loud from the Loud House. She's the goth girl, (laughs) but she's so funny. And honestly, the Loud House is such a fantastic show for these new kids. It's definitely classic Nickelodeon with that Gen Z animation. And I absolutely love the Loud House. And if you've got like... And if you've got, like, 7 to 10-year-olds, The Loud House is, like, the perfect show for them because mm. it's very good, and it's good for adults, too. Um, Nigel Thornberry and Helga Pataki, but I definitely think I'm probably going to end up meaning Oblita from Ah Real Monsters yep. because that is just so close to, like, my younger, the younger part of yeah. myself. Because, like, like, we still haven't seen if they're going to put Jimmy Neutron in there yet. Like, right. I mean, we still haven't heard about Timmy Turner and ended up like I was talking to my nephew the other day about the game too. I'm like, yo, Timmy Turner would be OP. Like Aang would be OP as hell in this game. Like I just me personally, I just want to see Quailman. Like if we get Doug, have Doug do like Sheik does in Smash, where he's where he can switch over to like Sheik can switch between Zelda and Sheik and have Doug do the same oh, thing, have Doug yeah. and have him switch over to Quailman. That'd be dope. That's just me. Like that's how I look at games. That would be cool. And I'm sure because this is such a super smash uh game type game that I think they'll end up pulling a lot of elements from it. It yeah. says uh, the it's developed by Ludosity and Fairplay Labs and it's going to be published by Game Mill Entertainment. But honestly, I'm sure Nickelodeon is paying attention to this very closely oh, God, yes. and I'm pretty sure they, like, I... I have no doubt that they're overseeing this entire thing, despite the fact that their social media says absolutely nothing about it. Well, that's the thing. So one thing I've learned, with the, especially with the, the Smash Duplex, we like to call them, very okay. few have had the success. Like, only one outside Smash has been Brawlhalla. Like, Power Stone had a little bit with the Dreamcast, like, but like it but it, it fizzed off because, you know, Sega stopped doing the console stuff. So, like, and then Brawlhalla, Brawlhalla's doing real fantastic, real good. So, I really think that Nintendo wants this to be a fun game, but at the same time, they want to have it a competitive edge with it as well, too. So that's why, I know earlier before we started the podcast, I was wondering if the control, it's all going to be about the control scheme. And whether it's going to be okay. overcomplicated. If it's going to be a straight smash duplicate, two buttons, super simple, in and out. And, like, multiple cast compatibility with that. So, that's why I'm like, hopefully it should be, if, it, if it's a smash beater, it should be real good on the Switch. If not, then they'll roll over to PlayStation for PS4 or PS5. Because we had a game like this that came out called PlayStation All-Stars. And the yeah. game was a shit ton of characters, too. And that tanked. Bad. Yeah. And so I, it was like, I remember that very briefly. Mm-hmm. And the tank real bad, and then we we have the same all have the same assignment, but at the same time, then Sony doesn't really have too many 
characters of its own like that. Where okay. intent were literally Nickelodeon's like, bruh, we got you. Like you might see Pete Pete in this motherfucker. Like, we don't know. <laughs> like they can do whatever they want. Not just cartoons, they're mm-hmm. Nicktoons, which means they have the ability to beat the crap out of each other. Right. Because like already so, what? The confirmed characters that we do have, we've got two Ninja Turtles, which yep. are Michael Michelangelo and Leonardo, oh, Nigel wow, Thornberry of the Wild Thornberries. We've got your fave, Powder Toast Man. Powder Toast Man! I'm sorry, is this one, dude? Like, I, and, he, and he flies I, backwards. His attacks are backwards. I love it. Like, I'm so, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I've never, actually, it's kind of funny that you say that, because I'm, and I'm amazed by that. I was never allowed to watch Ren and Stimpy growing up. I'm surprised I was allowed to watch Ren and Stimpy growing up. <laughs> like, yeah. rubbery nipples. It was so many, like, themes that you just, like, Especially when, like, okay, especially this one episode where he's cutting the log on Ippy on Stippy's back. Rain is yeah. cutting the log. He's like, oh, and Stippy's like, Ugh. I'm like, they're fucking. <laughs> and they're so, and a lot of these characters for me, and I'm sure definitely, obviously, for you two, are so old, it makes you wonder, like, how many more they're, like, going to do because the full roster hasn't been revealed yet. Right. Continue, though. You see with the roster. I'm sorry to interrupt. You can keep going. No, you're okay. No, go ahead. Tell me, tell me. So, yeah, so, like, my thing is, like, I, I know they got Michelangelo and Leonardo, but I'm like, but Raphael's my homie. But um, we haven't seen anybody from Rocket Fuel yet, I don't think. I don't think there's anybody from Rocket Fuel. We saw the character from Auto Mas- Monsters. We definitely got SpongeBob, and Patrick looks OP as fuck. Patrick yeah. looks like a tank that's going to be destroying motherfuckers, which I'm super excited for that, too. Yeah. But, um, yeah, then we got Danny Phantom. Danny Phantom's going to destroy shit, too. But, I think uh, Danny Phantom's going to be another favorite of mine yeah. that I'll probably main. But I wish that this is the thing. This is the thing. I kind of wish, which I know it won't happen, right. that Disney got involved and let we finally got Danny Phantom versus Kim Possible. That'd be badass, but that wouldn't happen, unfortunately. That would be quite a death battle, right? Because because this thing, like with with the Super Smash uh, Ultimate, you are got all these other guest characters coming in too. So I feel like Disney should do like a handshake with Nickelodeon, like, hey guys, let's 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 do mm-hmm. the same thing. But that's just me. That's just... That would be really cool. <laughs> so. It, you Like you said earlier, it's got up to four players. There's a single player and a multiplayer mode, and it has 20 levels, which implies to me that there's definitely going to be some sort of story mode. Yeah. So the other characters, though, you did mention Patrick Starr, but other SpongeBob characters are going to be SpongeBob SquarePants himself and yep. Sandy Cheeks, Oblina from Auro Monsters, which I mentioned, Lucy Loud, which I also mentioned. Mm. Yes. Uh, Lincoln Loud, her brother, the protagonist of the Loud House. Helga Pataki from Hey Arnold. The ever classic uh, Godzilla ripoff for Reptar yep. from the Rugrats. Zim from Invader Zim, mm-hmm. which we failed to mention. And then, yes, also Danny Phantom. And it's going to be available for all consoles, which means I'm going to, I wouldn't be surprised if crossplay was definitely a highly. Uh, like a highly used tool in all of this now because now you could probably get like a bunch of people in a room yeah. and play online. Oh, this is this 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 for me is a new new it's a new party game. Uh, you had a, yeah. if you had a friend's house, this is what's this is what's going on. It's a game changer because it's a game that everybody can relate to too. Like literally, like if you grew up, I grew up on these characters. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, outside SpongeBob, but it's like oh, they, they, like what if like Cartoon Network came over a crossover with Gumball and stuff too? Like it's. Some possibility, but that, that's hoping, that's reaching. But I'm super, I'm, as you see, I'm hyped as fuck for this game. Like, remember, because I, 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 I didn't see the trailer first. I saw the, I saw the, because I was on Game Press, and I saw the um, pictures first, and I'm like, oh shit. Then I'm like, okay, and then I found the trailer. I'm like, oh, 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 okay. You guys are serious. Like, you guys are like, yo, we're competing with Smash. We got, we got some good ass characters. We got some, we got good characters. Now we just make sure the game is good. Have fun with it. Agreed. I am really excited. And Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, like I said, is coming in fall 2021. And it will be available on old-gen consoles, new-gen consoles, your Nintendo Switch, and your PC. And honestly, this game could not come at a better time. Because in December 2021 of this year... (laughs) Gaming platform Steam will be releasing their Steam Deck. And it comes with three different models. It is a portable handheld that is resemblant of a Nintendo Switch. 
it will come with two analog sticks, your regular, regular, regular directional pad, and then an A, B, X, Y button layout. Yep. It's even got a track pad on both sides, both sides and then your three dots for your options and your share buttons, which you would have on a console. There's three models and they start at $399, $50 more than the brand new Nintendo Switch OLED. Mm -hmm. But obviously because it's Steam, it will do so much more. You'll have your PC games in your pockets and I know Tim is very excited. I am. I am super excited because we actually got our fucking Switch Pro. <laughs> Don't call it that. Nintendo might get mad. Hey, get mad. I mean, you guys once gave us a fifty dollar upgrade for nothing. That did absolutely you gave us a point you gave us a point seven point seven centimeters bigger screen total, seven inch screen. You gave us a, a docking that has Ethernet port on it with no four K support, no bigger hard drive space, none of this stuff. Like this, they literally was like, yo, our base form is still more, our base form, 256 freaking hard drive space. Base form switch for, for the Valve Steam Deck. And then it only gets better and better. And guess what? It supports up to 8K external for its docking. 8K. Not 4K. Up to 8K. And on top of that, I only play my, I hate to say it, but like outside certain Nintendo games, outside Metroid and, and Kirby and others, that's the only reason I play my Switch. Like all the any games I like and enjoy are on Steam. Now I'm gonna be paying more money on Steam, getting away with it on Steam, like, because that's the only reason why I really don't play Steam. Because like, I mean, outside for my PC, when I got to hook the controller, but now I'm portable with this thing, and I freaking get AK. Like, stop. Like, I'm. It's over. Like, if they say PC Master Race is is more than enough for right now, that's what's gonna happen. Like, I'm super excited for this, and I love the fact that they dropped it not even a week later. It was like, oh. Like, literally, Bob was just like, <laughs> Nintendo thinks they have us. And they dropped it the same day. To, today went live for the for the Switch uh, pre-orders. And they dropped that information the same day. Like, oh, but tomorrow you can get your you can get your Steam, Steam Deck. I'm like, fantastic. So I'm definitely getting the bigger one. I'm getting the one that's 620, that's 629. I'm going all out because I've, cause I've always bought other Steam-type, um, Steam-like machines like this before. And so, like, this is, like, the one where I'm like, yo, they finally got it right. Even though I'm kind of concerned with the button, the button configuration, how they got the buttons on the right side, I mean, I'll get used to it. But yeah, this is going to be replacing my uh, switch on travels now. For the sake of the listeners, I will let you know that it is that the starting price is three ninety nine, yes. and that's for your sixty four gigabyte and carrying case. There is two hundred and fifty six gig- gigabytes for five hundred and twenty nine dollars, which comes with faster storage an SSD internal storage, a carrying case, and you'll get an exclusive Steam community profile bundle. And then the one Tim is mentioning is 649, yep. and it is 512 gigabytes, fastest storage, and high glare etched glass. How fancy. Exclusive virtual keyboard theme, exclusive Steam community profile bundle, and the exclusive carrying case. So it depends on how little or how far you want your steam dollars your real dollars for steam to go not steam dollars you know what this this is the other thing too though which i i, I wonder if there's going to be a mod that's going to allow us to other play other cloud-based games like other mm. cloud-based platforms such as like amazon luna google stadia even like game pass is a cloud version that you can play from your cell phone and shit too and so i wonder if that's going to be the thing because if you can do all three of those on this on this thing right here, it's it's gonna change everything. Like it's gonna it be will the best change port- the face of gaming. Yeah, it will change everything because now it's just like, yo, I have my PC on the go, literally. Like nobody's bringing PCs out anymore. He's gonna be like, oh, I got my my Steam Deck. You gonna play a Steam Deck because I got everything on it right now. Um, other folks in uh, Sims Four groups have discussed whether or not um the Sims would be put on something like this. To which I want to say to simmers who may think that, no. Why not? If, Steam, if, if, if any game is on Steam, it be, should be playable on this. Um, I Oh, well, The Sims 4, I guess, is playable on Steam. But I'm not really sure how many people use their consoles on their desktops if they're using Steam. Most people who have The Sims on their Steam He's accounts playing PC. are yeah, playing yeah. PC. So, do they need the extra buttons? I I wouldn't know. But my guess is is that 
there will probably be some games you can play and probably some games you can't. Right. Because I feel like that's just how things are. <laughs> but um, I am kind of excited about this. And now it kind of makes me debate on should I get a Nintendo Switch OLED? Because the OLED model, in my opinion, and in the opinion of other gamers that I've seen on the internet, is that the OLED is mainly beneficial for people who don't already have a Nintendo Switch, which I believe I've said previously yeah. and often, and because I am one of those people who does not have a Nintendo Switch yet. So, of course, I want to get the brand new shiny one that's maybe, like, a little bit more, but, like, has, like, all the fancy stuff in the bigger screen. Yeah. You know, and I'm kind of, and as, not to dig deep into my childhood, but I am used to um, obtaining the secondary model because I am the second child. So my sister got the original uh, Game Boy Advance SP, but I had the Game Boy Advance SP Bright, the R I T E, mm. you know. So yeah, I mean, that was my and that was the best version of the Game Boy Advance SP. Like that was literally it was the bomb. Like it was the flip up, it had you had the bright screen because you had the regular Game Boy Advance, which is the long boy, and then you had the SP when it flipped up, and it was just like I played some Metroid. I mean, literally, I put in some hours on that thing. Yeah, it was it was good times. It was honestly to this day, I will I will I'm I'm gonna call them out and say it. Probably one of the best consoles of the generation too. It was literally one of the best consoles. It was a Game Boy Advance SP was that shit. Golden Boy, I mean Golden Sun, fantastic. Pokemon games, fantastic. Metroid Zero Mission, fantastic. I mean, it had a shit ton. Final Fantasy Tactics, it had a shit ton of good ass games. And then like in the SP, it was, it was just perfect. Like no more yeah. burning through batteries. You had to, you plug it in, start charging it up. It had six to eight hours of the gameplay. Like, oh, it's what the it's what the Sega Game Gear should have been. The Sega Game Gear. Damn, am I showing my age right now? I am showing my age a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm the old gamer. <laughs> Back in my day, we needed six double A's to play games. <laughs> so... Kids with your USB C's and your USB plug and plays. But here's my thing about the controls on the Steam Deck, which is it's got that X that's got that A B X Y format, which yeah. a, a B format is usual is is customary of Nintendo's. But I I personally am not used to an A B X Y format, and so I wonder if this is just something. If I buy it, am I going to just have to swallow it and get used to it? Or am I going to be able to switch over to be able to correspond it like a PlayStation controller? Because right. I have to do that when I play Tell Me Why by Don't Not Entertainment. Tell um, Me Why. I know. I sing it every time I start up. Every time I start up the game, I sing it. But I absolutely just, I'm kind of just like amazed at how quickly this dropped and how soon it's coming out. Well, we've always known that it was working. It's always been one of those things where Bob was like, it's there. We're just not talking about it. And that's, and that's what I like about Bob because they're just like, listen, when it's done, it's done. It reminded me a lot like ID before they got bought by Bethesda was like, whatever the game finished, it'll be fucking finished. Like, we're asking about the shit. Like, we'll let you know when it's done. And that's and honestly, that's how I feel like it should go back to being. Like, I, like it shouldn't be us gamers bullying, bullying these companies to force information out. Like, yo... We'll, we'll get to it. Like it's it's still there. You hey guys, it's still there. Girls, it's still there. Yeah. Put fucking bothering us. We'll get to it when you're finished. I mean, that's how I kind of feel like with like was it like a couple weeks ago they announced that hey, Tekken for Street Fighter it ain't happening, or it is happening, but we ain't gonna let you know. But we, we're tired of talking about it. It's been eleven fuck. It's been eleven damn years. Leave us the fuck alone. And plus, they kind of said fuck anyway because with Tekken versus Tekken Seven. I mean, they literally put in geese. They put in Akuma. Like, <laughs> they put in Noctis. They, they literally have been like, listen, it is what it is. And Tekken 7 is literally almost nine years old. And we are still playing it. So. Because, because mean, they keep getting, it keeps getting good and good. That's why, too. It keeps getting better and better. People make the same argument about Skyrim, though. People are still playing it, even though it's been a long, even though it's been longer than ten, you know, nine years. Yeah. You know, but people are still playing it. People are replaying it. And Skyrim is on every single fucking console since the freaking 
third generation. So like literally, because like, the reason it came out for PS3 and Xbox 360, it's been yeah. ported to PS4, PS5. It's probably get ported again. To, uh, probably get ported again. It's on Switch. Like, but it's a good fucking game though. It's the same it's thing with like game. Final Fantasy. It's a great game. Like you just like it's. But then we have Nintendo that puts out Skyward Sword on the Switch. Are you excited for Skyward Sword? Absolutely not. Absolutely oh. not. Absolutely not. I just hope everybody saw like how. I was not expecting that. Do you not like Legend of Zelda games? Oh I guess God, yeah. So, really dude, my my favorite Legend of Zelda game is the Minish Cap and Link's Awakening. Those are my favorite ones. And I love Four Swords Adventure too. It's just that keep keep Zelda back like you do with the console with that console. Like you're not the <sighs> Skyward Sword came out back on the you know I think Wii. So I don't know if it was the Wii or the Wii. We, we right, but either way, it's an old ass game, and you, you're not porting over to. It's like it's so many Zelda games out for the Switch. It it goes it, it, okay. It goes back to my hatred from not seeing any Samus till now, oh, and no. it's like everybody else is getting love. Like we haven't seen Star Fox in a while. We haven't seen Samus in a while. I mean, but yet here we are, next generation, and we got eight Mario games, freaking eight Legend of Zelda games, a couple Kirby's, like. A couple Kirby's, that's true. It's like Sam was just like I'm. I'm like Sam is just like yo. I'm head bitch of this motherfucker. I'm getting no. You haven't seen me since the Wii. You have not seen me since the Wii, and you haven't seen my adventure in 2D for the past 17 years. Like it's grown ass kids now. Since the last thing Sam's game came out, grown ass kids. Oh no. <laughs> and you're gonna tell me like, oh Skyward Sword on the Switch? I just want to. I just want to port. Of Metro Prime, uh, you give me that, then give me a port of Metro Prime, all three, and you give me fucking Dread. I'm good. I'm, I'm happy. Like, I, and that's the other thing too. Like, I feel like with the with Metro Dread coming out, why isn't Zero Mission and Samus Returns on the freaking Switch? Yeah. No, I kind of get Samus Return because it was it was built for 3ds, so I kind of understand that game not being on there, but. I'm just like, but Zero Mission, like all the other 2D games, they should definitely be on yeah. Switch. Outside, only that's on Switch is through the through the games through the um the NES store, which is uh, Super Metroid. And I, that's how many fucking times I beat that. So, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Well, if you are interested in the Steam Deck, it is coming in December, which is very soon, but just in time for Christmas or your birthday, if you're like me and your birthday's a week before Christmas. But then so- again, I might end up getting the Switch OLED because it, see, this is what they should have did. God damn, it. this is what they should have did. Tim is they, on his soapbox. It's I okay. am, I am, because like I feel like it, it just goes back to like they're not giving this like this lady, this miss, enough purpose, like. They should do an OLED Metroid Dread edition. Would that not have been cool as hell? They've done it Animal Crossing. Been. They've done Animal Crossing. They've done Pokemon. They've done everybody else's version of this. But we didn't, we, we can't get an OLED Metroid Dread Switch. Now I would have bought that shit in a minute. I think it would have been I think it would have been great and I think it would have sold well and would have been a nice collector. It would have sold more. That was now it's collector. Now nobody wants to get rid of it. But now you're just gonna give me a basic ass white switch with a bigger screen. Like, come on now, y'all. I would have oversaw all that shit just to have that shit. Oh no. <laughs> I'm like, okay, and and I hate to say it like that, but I'd be like, yeah, okay, Nintendo, you got me. Like you won this round. Take my money. Here you go. Enjoy. I'm not gonna argue that. But you just and it and it literally come out two days apart. That comes out the tenth, and this comes out the eighth. Yeah. I mean, whoever's in charge of Nintendo marketing, call me, please. Send me an email, Tim at BSN.TV. Love to talk to you guys about what the fuck you guys are doing. Because obviously you're not listening to your gamers. <laughs> or you're not listening to anybody. I was like, fuck it. We'll do it this way. What are they going to do? Oh, no. They're not give a shit. They're kids. Ah! They're kids. But I am so hyped for the Steam Deck. Steam Deck is awesome. I can, I can keep, I'm going to keep talking about it more because, I mean... Ooh, so okay, so I just read this real quick. So they just announced that Valve Steam Deck will let you shop on Epic Game Store. So that just changed everything even more. I do love Epic Games, and I do love a free game from Epic Games. And there's plenty of them. They're dropping once a, once a week right now. 
There's two right now in the Epic Games yep. store. So if you do not have an Epic Games account, I encourage you to do so. Because even if you don't like the free games they have right now, all you got to do is wait another seven days and there will be another free game that you might like. That is definitely true. But I like it, though. I like, I mean, I like Epic Games. I like what they're doing. I mean, one of the games I was about to download, I'm just like, eh. Because I love indie games because like, cause it's just different games. It's like a gamer's idea of how the game should play or whatever. So I, I, but the one that I was you talking about, I was, I'm just like, mm, I don't know. I do have quite a few um, free games that I've put together in my backlog. What do you got? Talk so. to me. I mean, I just got like three more games this weekend. I'm just like, why am I getting games? I'm not even touch these. I got Alice Kid. I got Bio Mutant. I'm like, I still haven't touched Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now it's the remake prelog. That's two of them that I haven't touched. I haven't finished Ghost. Look, go ahead. Please. I've got Sunless Sea. Mm -hmm. I've got the first tree. I think that's what it's called. The first tree. Uh, you're a fox in that game. Nice. I've got. I think the other free game I got was Dundara: The Trial of Fears, which I actually streamed like when I first started yeah. at BESN. And it's a really great game. It's a Metroid. It's a Metroidvania game. You would like that. Um, and I love all Metroidvania games, especially now everything's all Metroidvania slash Rogue. Like Hades, Hades is fantastic. Hades is that shit. I played the fuck out of Hades. I never played Hades, but I have tons of friends who played Hades and loved it, so I appreciate it. And it has won many awards, so yep. I have no doubt that it is a good game. Hades, Dead Cells, like fantastic. Like I mean. Fucking amazing. Absolutely amazing. I also got the Jurassic World Evolution game oh, off right. of the Epic Game Free Games. I'm actually thinking about playing it tomorrow for stream because the original is, or not the original, but the sequel, Jurassic World Evolution 2, is coming out sometime this summer. Mm. I thought it was maybe this month, but maybe not. Um, but it is coming out soon, so I wanted to play the first one first and kind of see what it was like before I decided if I was going to do something about maybe getting the second one and maybe playing it too. But I know I think the first one has to do more with like building your own park and I think the second one is more about defending yourself against, you know, wild dinosaurs because they're out in the world now. Speaking of dinosaur games, it's a one for um it's for it's on Game Pass right now that's kind of in beta demo. And I played mm -hmm. the shot of it. It's actually pretty cool. It's real fun. What's the name of it? It's called Extinction or some shit. It's um, let me give you a second. But it's real cool. Like it's like literally like it reminds me a lot of Turok, a better done version of Turok. Mm -hmm. Oh man, what the hell's the name of it? Give me a second. Do, 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 do. It's like not damnation. It's be a uh, second extinction. And second extinction. Yes. I feel like I've heard of that. And it's in game preview mode on Game Pass. It's fun as hell. Super detailed, and it's like a combination of like Apex, Turok. And you have a group of four, and you're just killing dinosaurs. And they're coming in waves. They're coming in waves. Like the Velociraptors are jumping at you. Yeah, so it's literally like playing like a playing like a horde level type game. But yeah, oh my gosh, so many games. Like I have Memorial Phoenix Rising, I haven't beat yet. Goner, I started playing Empire of the Sun, Crisis Tales. I started playing Dark Alliance. Like I've been playing tasters of games. Like I'll, try, I'll get like a two hour, three hour set in, and then I, and I won't come back. Like Rising Hell was the same thing. It's a rope type game. Metroidvania type game, super fucking fun. Outriders yeah. the same way. Octopath Child. And these are the games just on my Xbox, on my Xbox Series X right now. That's not talking the PS5, which is I still got Miles. God, just, I'm sorry. Like this, this is the problem of an older gamer that's running a company. Like this is the problem. Like, they have a whole game company. Too many game, too many games, and your entire job revolves around games, but you do not have time to play the games. Cause I'm busy, and now we're now we're making our own game, which is super excited for. And this is, <laughs> yeah, I am really. And that's and, for and, it. and let's let's talk about that real quick. So we're making our first in-house game, and it's funny because like as you just saw, like I'm a super stickler when it comes to gameplay and gaming in general, and so my developers was like, bro, I'm like, yeah, I'm that dude. I'm gonna test the shot because this game that we're building, it's it's not just for me. It's not for for uh, it's for kids, especially people of color kids that can relate to because. This is going to be the first game for them. They're going to be like, yo, oh shit, little, I, I, I relate to him. I have a sister like that. I, I, I know all this stuff. I, and that's what we, and that's what we want everybody to get out of it. So we'll be announcing more of that here pretty soon, though. But, yeah, we're super excited because it's going to be fun. I'm not trying to jinx it and shit, but, hey, I put 
we put some heart and soul into this development of storytelling of it, so, yeah. And everything we do really has heart and soul into it. Just like our friend Loki, who Woo! finished up his series, season one. Um, we haven't talked about Loki in the last couple of episodes because I wanted Been to watch them. Been waiting on her. Up. Waiting on so, you. I wanted to watch them in a cluster like I did last time. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing yes. Wrong with that. Consistency was key in, like, memorizing them, but I just want to say that Loki is a fantastic show, and it reads like a real sci-fi show, and I love that, and I'm probably going to watch season two, even though I have no idea about the Marvel lore that's going on, but I love the time travel aspect, I love the finale, and the conclusion, to say the least. So, I'm going to try to keep my explanation spoiler-free, but I am going to give a spoiler warning right now because Tim has a tendency to explain with spoilers, but I don't. So, <laughs> I mean, tell, me what, tell me what you thought, Tim. So, you, you want my honest opinion? Like, this is going to be the realest, this is gonna be the realest shit you ever heard from me. Ever? Ever? And this is why I like the fact, like, this, I have two ways to explain this. The first thing is that the TVA is a black-owned business. It's fantastic. It's a oh, fan, yes. fantastic thing that a black man owns the TVA. Like, like that's, that's brilliant. Also, the worst thing about it is that we actually had an ultimate Karen that was mad being that a black man was kind of mansplaining everything. And so she had a fit and took it down. So Marvel is literally starting phase four with a Karen. A Karen is what caused all these problems. It sounds quite timely. <laughs> I did not particularly see Sylvie as a Karen. I I kind of identified with the idea that maybe someone stole her life and her time from her. Right. But it's but it's super that's super hilarious though because it's like it's if you actually think about it, Sylvie wasn't caring. Like I get it, she was hurt. She was hurt. She's a variant. She's hurt. But it's like at the end of the day, he literally gave you a choice. He's like, yo, you can either fuck everything up or you can control it. <laughs> and she chose violence. <laughs> I've never met a woman who didn't wake up and choose violence, <laughs> myself included. Like, she literally chose, but even Loki's like, hey, let's think this through. Loki, the villain said, hey, let's think this through to the other Loki and said, hey. She's like, nah, nah, fuck their couch. Fuck all their couches. It was a very, uh, very self-moralizing moment. But I found the, it was a major spoiler all over the internet before I even watched the episodes that there was some sort of romantic encounter between the two Lokis. And then I realized that all they did was kiss. Well, so, and, and it's way worse than Norris actually mythology because Loki's fucking other horses and shit, but yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I found it to be a very, like, self, like, narcissistic moment, but also a moment of, like, self-love, as strange as that sounds, because Loki, like, he... He's been where she has been. Right. And I think I've seen enough Marvel movies to be able to say that indefinitely. I've seen enough explanations and gifts on tumblr to know kind of like the gist of his personality i think that's why i kind of more prefer to watch this anyways yeah. versus like one division because it's about avengers i've never seen or falcon and the winter soldier because i've never really seen the captain america that sequels. was deep though falcon and winter soldier was super deep though it was super super deep it was definitely more about black Lives matters type shit like it was dope like it was real People did say that the subliminal messaging about racial justice was quite strong. Ooh, that's how it ended. It literally ended like, is America ready for a black Captain America? And they literally covered that shit. It was fantastic. And, like, yeah. you have one end, because, you know, you have the, the one, you have supporters of, like, BLM and stuff like that, like, from other different races that support shit like that. And Bucky was, like, that supporter, like, bruh, like, Steve Rogers gave the man on you. Why aren't you doing what you're supposed to be doing? He was like, because if that was, if, if cause Steve was always a truth, justice, in an American way, whatever. So... Steve knew, like, yo, I'm going to give you this shield because this is what the fuck America needs right now. They need a black Captain America. They need this shit. 
and Bucky support that, and with Sam kind of going against the grain, like man, like you still got kids getting killed by cops and shit like that. And that you, and you, it was a very internal struggle with, with Falcon Winter Soldier, which I liked a lot about it. But the funny thing about that is that, especially they announced like yesterday, was that Don Cheeto was only in it for like 102 seconds. He got an Emmy notification instead of the guy that plays Isaiah Thomas, which is the the first black cat. That gets no yes. credit. Like his, like you felt that she's like, yo, I fought for this fucking country and threw my ass in jail. They expended on me because they're like, oh shit, a black man could take the super. So like this shit, it was like episode three was so fucking real. Like, oh. like just to see like, yo, and then he, he looks at Bucky like, yeah, and I whipped his ass too. And Bucky's like, yeah, you beat my ass too. I've never seen um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but I did Sorry, see spoilers, all of the things. Yeah. I did mention spoilers. Yeah. Um, I did, but I did um, notice that a lot of people were shocked and surprised and excited and happy for Don Cheadle for getting that nomination. But I, so I wonder, as somebody who hasn't watched the show, what this 102 second scene was like to be so impactful to the point of nomination, or is there some sort of weird underlying Academy thing going on that I'm just wanting to tinfoil hat about. I think it's just uh, some weird shit because, like, if, if you actually seen this, if you actually seen Falcon Winter Soldier, you would know, yeah. like, the Captain America scene is way more, way more fuel than just Don Cheeto showing up saying, hey, what up, everybody? Not, literally, that's what he says. Hey, what's up, everybody? Boom, boom, bang, bang, and that's it. First episode, oh, wow. in and out, that's it. I mean, dude, I mean, Anthony Mackie alone killed it. Like, the main character... <laughs> will you give it to Don Cheeto? It's like, hold up, yeah. Anthony Mackie literally makes a complete huge-ass decision and shit. Oh, whatever. But one thing, let's so, go back to Loki, though. One thing I liked about Loki is that yes. it literally was, for me, it was Lovecraft season two. Yeah, I want you, yeah, I did see your, uh, I did see your post about that. So I do want you to explain that to me a little bit. All right, so every character that was in, just about a lot, a lot of characters that were Loki's in Lovecraft. Okay. So, and then Let's with them see. announcing that Lovecraft 2 is not coming is not coming out to HBO Max. Yeah. And just to see what they did in a Loki, I'm like, oh, it's just, it's just a continuation. <laughs> because the way it ends in Lovecraft, I mean, I'm not trying to spoil Lovecraft because it's real good. And, the way, and when this character pops up, you're like, yo, did he just, he just became, he just went over here. <laughs> so that's why it's season two. <laughs> I did really love that, and I love that they announced season two at the very, very end of the credits. Oh, they, they knew Loki. they knew this shit was getting a second. It's, it was that good. It was it, it's fucking phenomenal. Like, don't get well, me wrong. I wasn't sure if it was going to be that good. Oh, I, I mean, true, but like, okay, so this is the thing. So when it came to episode five and episode six, episode yeah. five was definitely about redemption. Okay, but Correct. episode six had very little action. And literally, the dude sat in a fucking chair with the best story explanation to everything I've ever seen in cinema. Like, that's how good it was. I did think that the scenes with he who, he who, he who remains, yeah. yeah, with he, I think the conversations with, um, and the scenes with him were definitely some of my favorites because it's just like psychologically like made sense. Like, yeah. I thought. I thought they would walk away. Like I thought that the Lokis would just walk away from everything and just keep him alive. Or yep. I thought, I really thought they would be chaotic enough to maybe try and do it together. And, and plus, it gave it a realization of the original, the the, ver- the other variant Loki, Tom yeah. Hiddleston character, where he's like, he literally stopped thinking. Loki stopped being narcissistic. He said, he's, "This is the first time he was like, hold up, fuck. If we do what, it does what." Any other time, Loki would be like, oh, I get my rain, no. But he learned that lesson from the old Loki where he's like, dude, that's not everything, bro. Perp, that's not every, And that's why I like, I like episode five so much because in just those few moments he was with old Loki, it opened his eyes up. Where he's just like, yo, oh, shit, this, this is bigger than fucking me. I met other Lokis that did shit that I want to do, but this right here fucks everything up. That's why he just kept on Sylvie like, yo, shut the fuck up. <laughs> this shit. Like, nope, I'm focused. I'm killing this motherfucker. And, he, and remember, he owns everything. He gave her the options. Like, yo, like y'all can either run this shit or it's going to start another war. And that's exactly what it fucking did. And I was fucking, man. And then on top of that, when he kicks her, when she kicks him out, he's not even the, the same Mo- Mobius. It's another, per- it's another person. It made me, it gave me the vibe that she, that 
that specific that that specific tool that she used to make that portal push him in since that was from he who remains yeah. i wonder if that was if that's his specific universe and she pushed him into a completely different universe than he was a part of right because remember the memories it, it was three people at first but that started the first multiverse war and that's why he was able to make it the sacred timeline that good he's like yo like this is good but and I want you guys to run it if you guys want to, or keep like he gave him that option. And so now with that not happening, it just it broke the other king. I mean, I'm gonna spoil it, but it broke the other ones free. Yeah. And you said episode five was your favorite. I wrote down when I was watching it that I found episode five to be simultaneously hilarious yep. and intimate. I thought the writing and dialogue was the best in episode five, but I think my favorite was actually episode four. Mm. because that was actually the one that like blew my mind the most because as somebody who has never really seen the Mar all Marvel films mm -hmm. and as somebody who doesn't really know the comic book lore all like that because they're a uh, DC person I thought the I thought the twist was the episode 4 twist was phenomenal because I would have never guessed and then to go ahead through episode 5 and episode 6 knowing that episode four was the way it was. Like I had no idea what to expect, and it was all amazing. And you know, and that's funny that you say DC because if you actually pay attention to Lo the Loki series, it was literally DC form of storytelling. Because DC yes. gets as deep with characters, Marvel usually yes. doesn't. Outside what it does yes. in the comics, but for TV shows, Marvel never gets this deep with characters. And so I really feel like Marvel, like Marvel took a page out of DC's book. And like said, yo, if we're going to do Loki, we're going to do fucking Loki. And they did. And that's interesting that you brought up episode four because episode four actually brought that realism out from that. And then episode five broke him down even more. That gave him to his full circle rotation in episode six. Because the episode six Loki was not the episode four Loki at all. I would not be surprised if episode two, I mean, we've already discussed like, epi like episode two. Huh. Sorry. Uh, we have already discussed previously, I've discussed previously on the internet with people that Loki season one is setting up Doctor Strange and the multiverse of yeah. madness, the madness multiverse. And so I wonder if season two is going to also help that. And if that's like, and if it's true that this is going to help set up Doctor Strange, because wouldn't that be a fantastically wonderful team. Well, actually, so this is the thing. So let me actually pull this up real quick. Because um, cause technically, if Loki's going to be coming out next year, around this time, that's if they, because they know they're doing a season two. Because Doctor Strange doesn't come out till 2022, next year. Sure. But with this establishment of this other this character in episode six, it actually goes into Ant-Man, because Ant-Man actually finishes the whole storyline off. So either the second season, either it's going to be a continuation of what happens in Doctor Strange, or it's continue after what happens in Ant Man because Ant Man is basically where that part ends. Like the whole Phase Four, this Marvel corruption multiverse shit should end at Ant Man. I will be watching Ant Man, and I have plans to see Black Widow. Black Widow was awesome. It was good. Yes. It was good. I hate to say this though, a little long. A little mm -hmm. long. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder Woman Wonder Woman 1984 was the same way though. So, so yeah, that Wonder doesn't Woman really bother me too much. It was she, uh, it's, uh, Wonder Woman is set in 1984 DC when there was more African Americans living in DC than any place in the world at the time. And for that yeah. movie to even have, go have a scene in the mall where there's no black folks in it in 1984 DC got an issue with that. The black girl though who cameoed that she winked at though there's more black people How? in D.C. at the mall than, <laughs> than that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was all over is, the place. It, it, they they that suffered. Is, what? That too. Like, that they too. suffered from the Batman Forever Syndrome. Too many fucking villains in the movie. Yeah. I mean, and on top of that, like, I love what they did with Cheetah. Like, Cheetah, like, um, Cheetah was fantastic. I like what they did with Cheetah. It's just that they had way too many villains. I mean, I know they tried to do their sub-A plot, sub-B plot, and it just fell badly. Like, it, it never converged well for the ending. For her to be like, oh, yeah. I got the golden wings. And now you get to see the original Linda Carter, who's a badass, Aphrodite. Like, you saw all that, but it was just like, womp, womp, womp. 
Yeah. That level one, the I first see. one was awesome. Like they shouldn't have gave us Aries so soon. That's how I feel like they gave us such a badass so soon. And then, hey, come on now, the way she did the invisible plane, I wanted to punch the damn TV screen. Oh, I thought that was a really good I've idea. I've been working on this. <laughs> Really? Yeah, but I thought it was funny that she started that she started out trying to do a coffee cup and she lost it because it was so relatable. Because that's something I do. And then her, like, her flying is her just gliding on air. I'm just like, oh my god, so, I'm like cringing. But then again, that comes from the fact that I am a comic book reader. Yeah. And even though they have different universes and shit like that, I'm I still have because Wonder Woman has a set consistency. Especially yeah. now, back in firstly from the 2000s, like she's. This is Wonder Woman. Like, she's number two to Supes. Like, she's that shit. She's busting motherfuckers. Like, she is that chick. And, like, for the movie version to kind of do all this other crazy shit, we're just like, huh? Like, what? Like, oh, she's losing her powers? Oh, she's, she's, she, like, no. Wonder Woman, at the end of the day, no matter what, is a warrior. <laughs> so, no matter what powers or not, she's still whooping that ass. Yeah, but I thought it was a fair exchange in the fact a fair like wish exchange it was very monkey's paw in the wishes you know the guy wished for a cup of coffee and then he burned his tongue right. <laughs> you know so um but then but she literally wished for somebody to come back from the dead right. he a brand new soul inhabited an existing man's body and who knows where his soul went right. you know for the for the for the, you know, the weeks, the months that they were, you know, together, yeah. that he was actually Steve. And so it kind of made sense to me in that, like, she brought somebody back from the dead. So now, so now the, so now her consequences, now she's more capable of dying. Right. You know what I mean? And I could, and it, and so I like how you said it, it was definitely the monkey paw. I was like, oh, you wish for something, but here's the backlash from it. Like yeah. every single thing had a backlash. Like. But even with, like, Cheetah, like, her end up being the Black Lash, her actually looking more of a Cheetah. Like, oh, at first it was just Wonder Woman Powers, now it's her being a Cheetah, and blah, blah, blah. But even, like, the main villain himself, I'm just like, like, really? Like, this this is how we doing it? I want everybody to wish! Yes! More wishes! More! Like, are you a genie, my dude? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's basically what he wanted to be, like. Like, he was getting high off wishes. Woo! Yeah! Well, yeah. it kept making him. Well, it kept making him better. Yeah. You know? Give me a wish. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, bro. Are you are you coming off wishes, bro? Oh yeah. Give me number two wish. <laughs> so my question for you is: Please. You've seen One Division. Yes. You've seen Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. And now we've watched. And now you and I together have watched Loki. Yes, we have. So, because you've seen all three, which one has been your favorite and why? Oh, without a doubt, hands down, Loki is that shit. No, there's for reasons, though. Not for reasons. Like, so, of the other, so, WandaVision ended the way nobody intended to end. Like, everybody was like, what? Falcon Winter Soldier ended where everybody suspected it should have, how it should have ended. Loki was like, fuck all that. <laughs> Like, all your theories, we'll, 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 get, we'll okay some of them. But, like, for us to see what happened at episode six, everybody was like, bro, we weren't expect Like, we, even though they talked about, you know, through the whole series, for him to pop up, we're just like, yes. Like, they gave us what they want. And then you're like, oh, you're giving us more? Oh, yeah. this, this, it, it was just like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Like, it gave us, it gave us several oh, shit moments. And I'm like, and it, and it did it with only six episodes. They did it in six fucking episodes. Now, don't get me I wrong. I imagine they'll do six episodes again. And, you know, and I'm, and I'm, I feel like every season, no matter what type of show it is, deserves at least ten episodes. Six episodes is not enough for me. Especially, like, but, but then Loki kind of makes sense because yeah, I feel like if they would have done ten episodes, the last four episodes would have just dragged on. Yeah, I think they made really good use of their, like, our, you know, ish time, yeah. you know, most of the Loki episodes I've noticed were anywhere from 43 to 47 minutes. Yeah. So it's very much, you know, a, it's very much an hour show if you have commercials. Mm. So, um, I found, I did write, end up writing down for the finale of episode six that I was speechless and blown away by the ending because I did not expect things to go the way they did. Um, 
I heard um, Chadwick Bosman saying Wakanda Forever in the opening Marvel Studios credit yep. of the finale. And every single music piece, soundtrack, score, song they used in Loki in all six episodes was perfect. And so I'm hoping that we get some albums soon. True, because we have the whole What If coming out, too. And that's actually Chadwick Boseman's last work for Marvel is the What If series. And What If was like, and for those who are big on the What If series, it's basically like Marvel just doing whatever the fuck they want to do without any, like, reconciliation or any type of, uh, like, <laughs> hate from it. So it's super exciting to see that we're going to have a Black Panther that's a Star-Lord-type character that's in space. I'm pretty high for that. But, yeah, that's his last work is that is the What If series. The voiceovers for that, though, so. Yeah. I'll have to check out the trailer for that because I've heard a little bit about it, but I didn't watch the trailer, but I did notice that it's animated. Yes. So the What If series, like, they, they'll do, uh, like, one of them, for example, was the Punisher kills the Marvel Universe. And so it literally wow. has the Punisher killing every single character in the Marvel Universe. But it's a What If. It's like, it's just a What If scenario. And so, like, yeah. they do it with certain characters that usually aren't OP or not, and they're strong, where they give them, like, like power-ups and stuff. Like, for example, like, a real-life character who actually beat several fucking villains is Squirrel Girl. And she does, that's not a what if. Like, Squirrel yeah. Girl is fucking powerful as shit. Like, she's got no losses. Like, but if she's like the joke character, like Dan Hibiki from Street Fighter, where it's a joke character. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so that's the next big thing that's coming from, coming on Disney Plus is that. But, um, and then following to Shang-Chi, which will be coming out in September. So we got, because we got Black Widow, now we get Loki finished. And now we have our other characters being established with Chang Chi, the Internals, and then we're gonna end the year off with Spider Man. Because Spider Man basically says starts off the whole crazy multiverse shit. I am definitely going to see Shang Chi, Shang Chi, and the Legend of the Ten Rings, yeah. and I do not care. Oh, I love Shang Chi. He's a fantastic character. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to be seeing a lot more Marvel movies within the next like year than I have in like my whole life. Yeah. Which is fine. But like it's it's very new to me because I'm I'm not really going so much for like the continuity. I'm just going for like the people in it, yeah. or because I'm interested in the heroes. Like I'm only going to see Eternals because Kit Harrington and Richard Madden will be in it, and Kit Harrington's <laughs> playing somebody called the Black Knight. Like I'm not missing that. Like I miss Game of Thrones. Ergo, I'm going to go see this movie with two. But then the season favorite. comes out next year, right? Um, House of the Dragon will be is in production and will be coming out in 2022. Yes, but I mean, a year does not tell me when, so it does not give me time to prepare. So I have to take what I can get. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, none of the characters that we know are in it, though, correct? Um, Richard Madden, who I don't know who he plays, um, in Eternals, but he will be playing, um. He plays Rob Stark in Game of Thrones, but nobody from Game of Thrones, I believe, is being repeated in House of the Dragon. Yeah, because they're not even born yet. Yeah. I do think that would be cool, though, because, you know, sometimes you can catch people looking exactly like their ancestors from, like, 100, 200 years ago. And how many years is it said? Is it 100 years before Game of Thrones? Um, it's about, uh, I want to say about, uh... Now, about 150 from, like, the start of the first book. Oh, as, as for those of you guys know, she is our resident Game of Thrones expert. <laughs> Literally expert. All books, all storylines, she knows. LaFonz knows that shit. Yes. Knows that shit. I like, do. I would never question anything from her about Game of Thrones. She's, she is, she is technically, no, no, she's not Cersei. She's, she's too nice. <laughs> no. Liana Stock. I really am Leanna Stark. Or Lady Stoneheart. No, never. I could never be so vengeful. I mean, why not, though? You killed my son and my unborn grandson, like, at this red wedding where we thought we was cool with each other. Like, that's that's still, like, one of the best, like, reactions for people who had never read the book to see their reactions. Like, I remember remember when I was watching with my pops, because I got him to Game of Thrones, and I'm like, oh, it's a red wedding. He just sitting there. He's just like, oh, all right, you know, right. And he's oh, like, oh, like, oh, like. Yeah, we were in. I spent a lot of. I've actually been re. I've actually kind of been. I've been rereading the books, and by that I mean I've just been listening to the audiobooks of them. 
and uh, we actually like got to the Red Wedding when we were driving home, uh, my boyfriend and I, during our vacation over the weekend. Mm. And I could just kind of like see like the look on his face. He never really like paid attention to like the book entirely, but he's the kind of person where if something like sticks out to him, like when he's listening to something, he reacts to it. And so the Red Wedding was kind of like that for him. And so he was like, what is happening? And I was like, well, I said, we just basically listened to a whole bunch of people get killed at a wedding. He was like, wow. He's like, that's kind of messed up. I was like, I know. I was like, but that's okay. I said, (laughs) he's like, is it? I said, yeah. I said, because everybody's going to try and get their revenge. And he's like, well, that's not good either. Yeah, because Walter Frey woke up and chose violence. Yeah. He woke up and chose to. Oh, speaking of which, who does who does the narration of the audiobook? His name is Roy Deutrich, and he is no longer with us. But he narrated the first five books, Mm -hmm. and I believe when I saw like the information about him, it says that he does about nine over ninety voices for. So does it it have like a British accent for the audiobook? Yes, he has a British. He, he's British in general, but, yeah. um, yes. So, but the voices all do have some sort of accent to them. I... Oh, he does all the voices too. So each voice of the character, so each character has a voice too. Yes. No, see, I've always thought, of, but voices. I think audiobook. I'm thinking like Morgan Freeman's reading it and that's it. I'm not thinking of audiobook. Oh shit. They got fucking this person playing this person type shit. Like that's actually cool. Um, there is a short story novella, or there's a book that's got three, like, short stories in it called A Night of the Seven Kingdoms, and it's, like, um, short story prequels about, um, about a knight, a hedge knight and his squire, Uh and they're actually narrated by the actor who plays Viserys, Harry Lloyd, and he doesn't really do voices for that, but he's very good at the narration. Interesting. Interesting, like like that is some cute ass shit. That's what's up. I'm not, yeah. I mean, I'm, I mean, I mean, if I hear audiobooks, I might just, I might pass out. I'm so used to like actually sitting back and reading and enjoying mm-hmm. some good stuff. But um, yeah, that's actually that's actually pretty pretty freaking pretty sweet, pretty cool. You do sometimes have to focus with um, audiobooks, but I really in. But I you're mean, a reader though. You like that's you. That's your whole. I world. do. Yeah. I do. I love to read. I mean, I'm reading ton of books right now. I'm also trying to sell some books, so if you're for some books, hit me up. What books you got for sale? I mean, shameless plug. <laughs> some real, some some really old, uh, some really old teen books, some classics. Babysitter's Clubs. Series. <laughs> no Babysitter's Clubs, but I've got some, uh... R.O. Steins. Uh, some, yeah, I've got a couple R.O. Steins and some vampire books. Not Anne Rice books. You guys, you guys sell those. No, 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 I don't. I don't own and I don't own any Anne Rice books, like period. But if I did, I still wouldn't really sell them. I'm gonna say that, like, if you want, that's Anne Rice is how you do vampires. Like, I'm mm-hmm. big on vampire shit. Like, I love vampire shit. Like, and that and that, she is vampire shit. <laughs> I feel like she is like the. I mean, also outside Bram Stoker, like, like that's the go-to. That's why I never got into Twilight because I'm like, what? Huh? The the shiny and shit. The fuck. It was, I think, the sparkling vampire trope that she added. I thought it was very clever and unique. And I think a lot of people liked it because it's something that's almost literally never done before. Like, turning to ash is, like, one thing. But shining so bright that you, like, that, like, diamonds, like, glitter off, glitter off of you, like a crystal. It makes like, you have that sex is... with me. That's weird. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tim. So sexy. I need the bang of the vampire. <laughs> but it's intimidating. It, it's intimidating. Um, last thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, switching gears. Because we were talking about... Okay, so this actually makes sense. Because we're talking about Twilight. And Twilight is on Netflix. And so... On the Black Esports Network uh, Facebook page today... At lunchtime, it says Netflix has hired Mike Verdu, a former EA and mm-hmm. Facebook Oculus executive, as vice president of game development to lead its efforts in expanding services beyond film and TV. 
So, what do you think of Netflix? And to add on to that real quick, and to add on that, they also gave Shonda Rhimes an initial $100 million to push into more game publishing. So, Netflix is now into gaming. Shonda Rhimes? Yep. $100 million. That's a lot. So, Netflix is big on games. So, So what do you... I don't like it. But what do you think about it? they, They have to pivot. Because right, I mean, so so right now, what's going on with the streaming wars? HBO Max and Amazon are really starting to just kick ass right now. They're they're stepping their game up. Each one is dropping content that's fantastic. Disney's out here doing some big dick energy shit too, and so that's now that Netflix had shit a good ten year head start before all this shit started happening where they start really realizing how much revenue they're actually not keeping, especially from films. Like for example. Last week with Black Widow's release, they, Disney Plus made sixty million dollars straight cash off a of stream. That movie theaters don't touch anymore. Like when they when they put stuff in movie theaters, they have to split the different profit margins and stuff. Now you just gave me sixty million on my own platform, <laughs> sixty million on my own platform that's straight cash. Like I have to I have to divvy up to anybody else. Yo, that changed everything. So now. The streaming wars have noticed that, and Netflix is like shit. Netflix has started noticing that their customer base are like, okay, am I paying paying you twelve bucks, or am I paying sixteen dollars over here? Am I paying eight bucks over here? Like people are starting to realize that now. So Netflix is like, yo, we got to pivot our business. And guess what? What's the best place to pivot? Gaming. Gaming. Gaming alone is a freaking sixty billion dollar industry. Netflix is like, yo, we got to tap into that. So yes. Hiring an EA executive for the start. And so basically what Netflix is going to end up doing, which has already failed on multiple ways already, because even though Amazon hasn't dropped their Looney yet, the Stadia yeah. is not doing that great, even though it's one of the best platforms the game on. So basically what Netflix is going to do is it's going to have an interface for, hey, Netflix movies, Netflix games. Here's your cloud. Here's your, st- your controller. And now you're playing Netflix right from your TV using the controller. The Stadia is really... The Stadia is the best, but like it's really not. I forever will regret not getting it when it was free. But it is the best, but it's definitely not as popular. And I wish it was because then it would be easier to obtain. And what I think what should have happened is though, even though Netflix is going to try their own doing their own platform because they know streaming yeah. and that's their technology, I wish they would have cut a deal with Google and just go that route. Yeah. And then and then put the platform like that, so that way it's like Netflix games. Because I just hate to say it, but a lot of kids, I think about it, how many kids actually like mommy, mommy, I want to watch Netflix. A lot of kids don't do that. No. So for a kid to, to jump in this cloud page gaming, especially if they have a shitty controller, and that's going to all come to shitty controller too. Like with Stadia, you didn't have to buy the Stadia remote. You can use a PS4, PS4 controller or Xbox Series controller to play Stadia games, or just right. a, or just a PC or just a mouse and keyboard. So I'm super excited for this, but at the same time. Netflix has to get it right because you have two big companies with unlimited money not worrying about shit failing at it. Yeah. And so for Netflix to get that shit right, they better learn of what... Because, I mean, don't get me wrong, Luna hasn't came out yet, but Luna's... Like, people, a lot of people are saying Luna's pretty much dead on arrival already. Because Stadia's not doing shit. And the is the best version of every game that you see. Like, Cyberpunk had zero problems on fucking Stadia. Because <laughs> yeah. it was the best version because it's running on a shit ton powerful PC. Like... People aren't grasping that, like, yes, and you're playing through a fucking browser. That's amazing. Yeah, I think that's the I think that's the real kicker for me is that it is a browser. I literally, you know, if you've ever played a game in a browser, you know it sucks. Right, and now you're playing Cyberpunk, Assassin Creed, Mortal Kombat on your browser with zero stone down. Don't you have a good ass internet connection? Stop. Stop. So Netflix did a lot to figure out. I mean, I wish some success in it, but. And I, like I said, I know why they're doing it because they want to pivot the business and start getting more revenue coming in. Because, because if this if this doesn't work, I hate to say it, if this does not work, they're gonna start putting ads on Netflix. Yeah, I think that's what they're trying. I think that's why they're doing this because they don't want to put ads on Netflix. So it's like, well, instead of doing advertisements, let's try something else. Yeah. So that being said, though, if they're doing this pivot, what kind of Netflix originals do you want to see have games? Ooh. I mean, first off, Castlevania. <laughs> yes. I mean, if you're gonna start of with course. Netflix games, go with what worked. Like, look at like for like Stranger Things should have a better game now. Yeah. 
like work with your own content that you have and make games out of it. I mean, it makes fucking yep. works. Like, oh, like Hemlock Grove will be a fantastic game because that was a great fucking series. I mean, yep. House of Cards could be a freaking Ace Attorney type game. Like, they have all these Netflix originals that could turn into some awesome ass shit. That's because they have the licenses and stuff now too. Like, start throwing Gundam games on there too. I mean, Cyborg Zero to Nine. They have lots of options. What about you? Like, what what Netflix series are you watch? Like, I mean. That could translate well to a video game. So, I don't want to get my hopes up, but I would like to see a reboot of Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego Games. Where in the world is Carmen Sandiego? Yeah. Yeah, that I, shit uh, was banging. I'm like, yo, I'm gonna go to Carmen yeah. and would destroy shit. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I would love uh, new Carmen San Diego games because I think they would just be they would be for an entire generation of kids, and then it would definitely be something adults can enjoy because it would definitely be something that you know parents and even you know like young grandparents yeah. could like heart could, like heart. You know, in, you you know, know what the sad thing to. is though. It's the reason why I know geology is because of Carmen San Diego. Really? Hell yeah. So I'm like, oh, they're over here. Like, and because they literally, they gave you, I'm like, it, it's like the reason why I studied geology. Like, why well, I know maps and shit now because literally because of that game. Because yeah. Carmen, where the hell is she at? Geology. <laughs> ge- geology. Geography. Geography. Geography, yes, thank you. Well, geology and geography, yes. actually, are not really all that heavily studied in public education systems in the United States. Nope. And geography, for sure, is probably one of our weakest points God in is. Uh, global education. Yeah, people that came and name all 50 states. <laughs> I used to know all 50 capitals. We should give it a try sometime. <laughs> it's like, um, shit. <laughs> yeah, we should give it a try sometime. Oh, I already went blank. I'm already like, um, I know two. That's it. But I just, you like, give like me said, an alphabetical order, I'll give it a shot. Shoo. I mean, alphabetical order state by state with the capitals too. Yeah, that's that's yeah. extra credit for next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's only right now. Dude, I literally just know Columbus, Ohio. And like everything else just goes blank. <laughs> I don't know. I can probably remember about half of them, maybe. Oh shit! Go for it then. Not right this second, but <laughs> you'd have to name off a state, and then I would try it. Okay, well then, well here we go, Florida. Ooh, Tallahassee. <laughs> oh, there we go, Georgia. Uh, Savannah. Let me no. Google, let me Google this shit. <laughs> I saw that it's mouse. Gotta be. I saw that hand go down to the mouse. Nah, I'm petting the cat. He's right here. Like, mm, yes, I'm touching sea smoke. Google, mm. <laughs> state capitals, please. <laughs> Alexa, state capitals, yeah. Are you fact checking me? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not doing that. At all. I was gonna say, <laughs> I do kind of hope for. What I do hope for is that instead of Netflix trying to just, like, capitalize on, like, what they don't have, I hope they focus more on the things that they do have, which is creating games, like you said, with Stranger Things, based off of their own content. Because Black Mirror would make fantastic games. Which, with Black Mirror, the, uh, the, they did, one episode was a game, though. Yes, Bandersnatch yeah. was an interactive episode. And they've had plenty more like it. Yeah. So on one hand, it does kind of make sense for them to dip their toe in the game development. And I really think that there's really a market there for Netflix to be able to do educational games because I do know, because even though kids don't ask for Netflix a lot, I do know a lot of parents who have Netflix, yeah. you know, and use the kids' well, profile quite a bit. And here's the thing, though. I'm going to hit you with some insider, not really insider news, but like from a business standpoint, Netflix yeah. has a shit ton of data that comes in off their users. So therefore, okay. they can actually pinpoint using the demographical information that they get from the data, which games and which games they should start developing based upon the users that are using it. For example, uh, with the kid profile, they can pull data off that and make games towards the kids, whether it be thirteen to forty-four or whatever. They can they have that information, and they should use that to oh, a wow. full advantage as well too. That's what I would do from Netflix standpoint. So if I know that Stranger Things is a hit, I will definitely make a game based on Stranger Things and geared it towards thirteen to freaking twenty-five for people to play and download. It just it yeah, just gonna be interesting how that character model, that business model is gonna follow through 
whether it's going to be an sus additional subscription price of like Netflix or it's going to be its own subscription price. Luckily, I hope they don't follow Sony's thing and have everything so priced separately. And if you like for 30 bucks a month, you get Netflix Prime and Netflix Gaming. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's just from a business perspective. And if they do it that way, well, then it would definitely pivot and should adjust accordingly as long as they follow the data they have available. Because it's like I said, it's certain games that would make sense. Like Ozarks could be a great freaking strategy game they could turn into if they wanted to because they own these licenses. That is kind of neat. <laughs> kind of weird, but kind of neat. So, yeah. I mean, it, it could be a win-win. But like I said, you've already had two giants still to try to do it and they failed. But then again, a lot of people don't look at Google for those things. So even though Google has Google Playbooks, Google yeah. Movies, they have all this shit. Like, it's only done... Nobody people... looks to them for that. Exactly. And so now it's Netflix, very last resort. Yep. And so now Netflix is going to have to use, I mean, even from a marketing standpoint... Most likely, they're going to use influencers to push the product once they finish developing the platform as well, too. So I would of... like to be. I want to be an influencer for Netflix. <laughs> oh, I can definitely do both. Like I'm, I mean, I'm a, shit. I'm a movie buff like crazy. But I, but that's the thing. They, they would have to look at those certain things. That, and luckily, they have one of the top guys that's good at that. But at the same time, yeah. see, it's too much data out there for this shit. Because even EA failed with EA Play. That's why they brought it over... With yeah. Game Pass now. It's yeah. certain things that don't do good standalone. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm EA getting too, am I getting too deep with this? Not, no, EA Play, like when I think about it, I remember like EA Play. And now we have like EA Access and I think they're just both terrible. Yeah. Because EA Access is trying to be EA Play and I don't like that. And like it, I have a hard time buying Sims Pack sometimes because it wants you to automatically do EA Access instead of just buying it on its own. Right. And how is the Netflix platform going to be for multiplayer games? Because now that right. that's going to add another another cost as well too. Because you got to have some good ass net code to be playing certain games, especially if it's multiplayer games too. Right. So it's, the, it's they really have to kind of they have to test this business market real good to make it work. Like you said, because yeah. there's really been three giants that have tried and failed. Mm-hmm. Doing movies and playing games is two different fucking things. Like, yes. I highly doubt that my father and my mother Preach. would be like, oh, let's go over to the Netflix game and play some games. Now, if no. they get a business model with family games, like you don't know Jack and Carmen San Diego type shit, that could work. Yeah. But, and they, like I said, and they have that data. So they have the data to look at based upon the number of subscribers that use their platform. They can look at and make those decisions based off accurate data. Yeah. Well, thankfully, the news is still pretty new, so yeah. we don't know all the details of the hiring yet. But, I mean, to be an EA and a Facebook Oculus exec is a big deal. It is a big deal, but he no longer works at those companies, too, though, so you got to look at that. And yeah. Oculus isn't doing that great, either. Yeah, and I think a lot of that has to do with, you know... When I think back to interviewing Super Saiyan Games, and we talked about how VR is a niche market, and Oculus is that shit. Oculus is VR. Like I, at first, I'm I'm still big on augmentation. Like augmentation makes more sense to me with Google Glass and things like that. Yeah. But Oculus, though, like when you actually that thing is fucking amazing. Like I have one. I love it. And like if to watch Netflix on it, they actually gives you like a couch <laughs> inside the headset. So I'm like, but it's one of those things where you like, I can't share this unless another person has Oculus. Yeah. But it's so beautiful, like the things you can do inside of it. Like it's literally your own personal space. It's just that yeah. it's not good with other people because unless you got other friends who have these systems outside of people who are on the, you know, on the no market playing with it, that's it. Yeah, it but gets like, a little laggy probably. It does. It does. But like watching movies, like I was watching Dark Knight going the other day. I'm just like, this is dope. And you're just right here just looking at the headset just like, yo, I'm inside of a... Like, it's perfect. Yeah. Like, like I, this is the thing, too. I wish I could take my Oculus on the road with me, but it's just so damn big. It's, it's like, it's not a, there's no personal carry couch. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't realize. I, I don't know. I guess I just always thought it was maybe, like, just a headband that goes around your head. Nope, it's, and... yeah, it's, a, it's a big-ass headset, and you got two remotes. Like, I would, like, to me, I would love to carry on an airplane, because I'd be like, dude, that's going to be four hour flights to Seattle. I'm like, hell yeah. I'm killing it. Yeah. But it, it requires too many good connections. Like, if you if you want a shitty Wi-Fi, it's done. Like, like it's like you require it requires too much attention for it to be a successful console, and that's something wrong. With that it's the it's perfect to be at home, but like when I'm at home, I'm like PS Five, Xbox Series X, PCs, Xbox. Like I got all this other shit. Yeah, 
Yeah. And there's not, not the last thing out. you want to do after like a long day of like you know doing stuff is you know you don't want to do the hassle of putting together your Oculus. You just want to be able to push the power button and sit down. Right, and you can once you set like and that's the thing like once you set up your boundaries. But the thing is like it knows when you're out of your boundaries that you set up. It'll be like, oh, you want to set up a new boundary? You're like fuck. Like right now, I get home, I hit this, I hit this button, and I'm, I'm starting, I'm gaming. Like it's that simple. Yeah. Oculus is like, hello, how you doing? Connect to Facebook. Hello, yeah. how you doing? But it's it's a super good period, but that's why I'm still big on augment. But Netflix definitely has something they can do there with that too. So yeah, good luck with the EA person, see what they can do with that shit. But if they do it right, it'll be, it'll be some great. He has whoever's doing it though, they have to have a, a great ass team. Yeah, it's worked. It's actually worked with each of these other companies too to make it that to make it good. I agree. I really do wish Netflix all the best of luck in their game development. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about? Tonight? Yes, there is. So we're going to be starting our community game night here pretty soon. We're going to be doing a monthly with it, and next week we got our tournament starting back up. So make sure you head to the site and register for those. We got Monday Night Smash starting Monday again. And then also we're just doing Wednesdays, which will be our beatdown with Guilty Gear Strive. So make sure you guys sign up. And with some of this money, we're giving out headsets and prizes from HyperX. And also we're giving out some cash flow for what you need. So make sure you check us out and go to our BSN.com, not .com, not .tv website. And also we, we've worked out our deal with Amazon, so we got that program too. So you're going to be seeing a whole new different site here pretty soon too. So stay tuned. I'm really nervous about the new site, but I am so excited. And remember that this is Black Esports Network, and you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at BESN TV. And you can follow us on Twitch, where you can see me stream Monday and Friday mornings and Wednesday afternoons on twitch.tv slash BESN TV one, because Black Esports Network is your number one place for black content all day every day and i am the fonts and he is tea fields and we appreciate you taking a slurp of this blurred soup and we will see you all next week hell yeah